Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for our monthly GPU pricing update video. And I thought because not a whole lot is going on in the GPU market right now, it's probably a good idea to look at current prices and discuss the best graphics cards. A couple of days ago, I looked at pricing trends over the last few years to assess what this generation's graphics cards should have been priced at. Unfortunately, today we have to deal with the reality of the market and what has been served up. Before looking at the best GPUs, just a quick update on the graphics cards that launched between our last episode of this series and now. The AMD Radeon RX 7900GRE was a bit of a weird one, being a re-release of a product that AMD had already released for some countries, though they did update pricing to $550 US. As expected, not a lot of fanfare for this launch, not a ton of interest, though you can buy one right now at the MSRP if you want to, so there's no real supply issues. Another product that we managed to look at recently was the GeForce RTX 3050 6GB, a cut-down version of the RTX 3050 that saw not only a reduction in VRAM capacity from 8 to 6GB, but also a few significant reductions in core count. Being from an older generation and launched silently, this one was never going to blow up and it indeed hasn't, with current retail pricing settling down to the $170 MSRP, though there is only one model in stock on Newegg at that price, the rest are $180. Still, it's there as an option, primarily useful for those who want a graphics card without a PCIe power connector for whatever reason. Looking at current pricing for existing models, for current shoppers, the best high-end graphics card on the market is undoubtedly the GeForce RTX 4090, mostly because it has little to no competition. A few months ago, this product was up around the $2,000 US mark, but it's since dropped to $1,820, still a $220 premium above its MSRP. Pricing is trending down, so now might not be the best time to buy one, but it remains in the top spot in terms of performance today. Obviously, being a Halo product, the RTX 4090 does not present great value. It's around 32% faster than the RTX 4080 Super, which you can buy right now for the $1,000 MSRP, putting the 4090 over 80% more expensive. Not a big deal if you have plenty of money to spend on a premium graphics card for gaming, but typically the 4080 Super makes more sense. Speaking of the 4080 Super, around the $1,000 mark at the moment, you have the aforementioned NVIDIA GPU, which has recently returned to its MSRP, alongside the Radeon RX 7900 XTX from AMD at $910. The RTX 4080, the original non-Super model, makes no sense at $1,100, as it's slower than the 4080 Super and costs more, so yeah, just don't buy it. Around this price point, the 7900 XTX is typically about 10% faster in rasterized games and 24% slower for ray trace games based on our latest data. This puts it in an interesting position where the best GPU for you may depend on how you value ray tracing. The RTX 4080 Super is clearly better value for ray tracing, offering 18% better cost per frame, but the 7900 XTX is about 20% better cost per frame for rasterization. There's certainly reasons to buy either, but with the superior feature set of the 4080 Super, I think it's typically the better buy. In the next tier down, we have the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super, maintaining its price tag of $800. The RTX 4070 Ti, which is still available at a new low of $680, along with the Radeon RX 7900 XT at $700, unchanged in price from last month. Like with the 4080 versus 7900 XTX battle, the best GPU here also depends on how you value the different performance metrics along with features. When talking about rasterization performance, the 7900 XT is the best value and is also the fastest, 7% better than the 4070 Ti Super and 17% better than the 4070 Ti. At a similar price to the 4070 Ti, it's the obvious choice if you think rasterization is most important. However, when it comes to ray tracing, the 4070 Ti and Ti Super are much faster, the base Ti offering 23% more performance on average for $20 less. Meanwhile, the 7900 XT performs more like an RTX 4070 across our ray traced benchmarks, or even worse in path tracing. On the other hand, the 7900 XT has much more VRAM at 20GB versus the pathetic 12GB you get with the 4070 Ti, which is pretty unacceptable on a $700 product. With 4070 Ti still being available, they present reasonable value up against the 4070 Ti Super. The Ti Super is less than 10% faster, but costs 18% more right now, though it does come with a more acceptable 16GB of VRAM that might be handy in a few years from now. Honestly, I think all of these models are appropriately priced, and it could go either way. The Ti Super is the most rounded product, but with the highest price tag. The 7900 XT is good value for rasterization, and the 4070 Ti is competitive at 120 
$20 below its MSRP. In the upper mid-range, we have four products between $500 and $600 US. The RTX 4070 Super still sits at $590. The recently released RX 7900 GRE at $550. The discounted RTX 4070, which these days is just $525, as well as the RX 7800 XT, which can be found for $490. In terms of cost per frame value, once again, it depends on rasterization versus ray tracing. The 7800 XT is clearly the best value for rasterization, 7% better than the 7900 GRE, and 14% better than the 4070 Super in terms of cost per frame. The 4070 Super is typically the fastest GPU, but also the most expensive in this range, and it's only 9% faster than the 7800 XT for rasterization. The 7900 GRE simply isn't cheap enough at current prices. When factoring in ray tracing performance, this flips on its head, and now the RTX 4070 Super is the best buy, though it's only slightly ahead of the 4070 in terms of cost per frame. In our 10 game sample, we had the 4070 Super offering 15% more performance for a 12% price premium going on current prices. So, whichever way you want to go there, mostly it comes down to whether you want to pay $590 or $525 as you get corresponding levels of performance. I think this also applies in general to the battle between AMD and Nvidia, around $600. I'm most tempted by the RTX 4070 Super, but at $500, the 7800 XT makes a good case for itself. With that said, I could easily be convinced into spending the extra $35 on the RTX 4070 to gain access to faster ray tracing and Nvidia's superior feature set, while only sacrificing around 10% to rasterization performance. The 7800 XT was a lot more attractive in comparison to the 4070, when it launched because it was $100 cheaper than the Nvidia alternative. But with that gap shrinking to just $35, it has allowed Nvidia's offering to become much more appealing. The next battle as we move down the product stack is the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti versus the Radeon RX 7700 XT. The 4060 Ti is currently priced at $450 for the 16GB model and $390 for the 8GB model, more expensive than we saw last month. Meanwhile, the 7700 XT has hit a new low price point of just $410 US, which shakes things up there a bit. The 7700 XT is clearly faster for rasterization, offering 17% more performance at 1440p, and its 12GB of VRAM is adequate around this price. The 4060 Ti 8GB is impossible to recommend at $390 due to its small amount of VRAM that does lead to limitations in some modern games, leaving the 16GB variant as the only legitimate contender. With current pricing in mind, I find it difficult to justify the 4060 Ti 16GB as it's 10% more expensive and slower, though for ray tracing it's much faster, so once again if you value ray tracing, get the GeForce GPU. The spanner in the works here that does complicate things a bit is the continued availability of the Radeon RX 6800 at just $400 US. The 6800 offers similar performance to the 7700 XT, but gives you an extra 4GB of VRAM to match the 4060 Ti 16GB, and it costs $10 less than the 7700 XT. Power efficiency is similar between the two models, though the 6800 lacks AV1 encoding. For a rasterization focused buyer, I'd choose the 6800 over the 7700 XT while it's still available at that sort of price difference. At around $350, there's two main choices, the RX 7600 XT at $325, or buying one of the last remaining RX 6750 XTs at $340. Lurking in the shadows for NVIDIA buyers are the cheaper but slower 60 series, so 3060 and 4060. Between the two AMD models, I think it's a no-brainer. The RX 6750 XT is nearly 20% faster than the 7600 XT, while costing just $15 more, and it still offers 12GB of VRAM, which is largely sufficient here, though not quite as future-proof as the 16GB 7600 XT. With that said, I don't expect 6750 XTs to last much longer, as the similar 6700 XT has already sold out in most locations. In the mainstream market, there's a bit of competition here. The RTX 4060 sits at $295, the RX 7600 at $260, and the Intel Arc A770 16GB at $280, and those make up the current generation offerings, while there's the $240 6650 XT, the $230 6600 XT, and the $280 RTX 3060 12GB, and they're also all still available from the previous generation. 
There's a couple of things to consider here. Firstly, on raw rasterization performance and value, the RX 7600 and RX 6650 XT offer the outright best cost per frame, with the 7600 being slightly faster and slightly more expensive. There isn't much of a difference in power consumption, but the RX 7600 offers AV1 encoding, so generally at these prices I'd choose the 7600. The 7600 offers slightly better rasterization performance for $35 less than the RTX 4060, and I don't think ray tracing performance is overly relevant here, as the 4060 is not very capable of ray tracing. Though the usual advice remains here, if you value ray tracing, get the GeForce product. However, the bigger factor for me could be upscaling, as DLSS is much better than FSR at upscaling at lower resolutions like 1080p and 1440p, which would be the typical resolutions to pair with this class of product. That could be enough to justify the GeForce GPU's 13% premium, even if it means sacrificing a few frames, but I wouldn't say it's the clear choice either, especially as even DLSS isn't that great at 1080p. But if you are considering the RTX 4060, just get the RTX 3060 12 gig instead. It's slightly slower and slightly cheaper, meaning similar cost per frame, but packs 12 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 8 gig, which will have better longevity and ability to play newer games at a higher texture quality settings. The trade-off here is the RTX 3060 lacks DLSS frame generation support, but at this price point I'd take the extra VRAM over frame gen. I could also see the extra VRAM of the 3060 being a reason to get it over the RX 7600. Also up for consideration is the Intel Arc A770 16GB, which has the most VRAM of any mainstream GPU, if that's something that you value. Performance is typically similar to that of the RX 7600, at the expense of much higher power consumption. Arc GPUs also have more variable performance due to their newer and less widely optimized drivers. Some games work great, others don't, so that's not ideal for gamers playing a wide variety of titles, especially if you like playing on day one of release. At $280, I'm not convinced the value is there, but you might find it to be decent if there's specific games that work well for you on Arc. For entry-level gamers, the choice is simple and has been for quite a while now. Get the Radeon RX 6600 for just $190 US, not an especially new price or anything, it just offers the best overall value. It's much faster than the GeForce RTX 3058 GB, which these days is hard to find and typically costs over $300, much higher than its historic low, but realistically the 3050 has always been bad value. It's also about 50% faster than the RTX 3056 GB for just $20 more, a complete no-brainer in my opinion. The Intel Arc A750 and A580 are also around this price range, the A750 costing $210 and the A580 at $165. The A750 is generally 10-ish percent faster than the RX 6600 and costs 10% more, but like with the A770 versus RX 7600, performance can be variable depending on the games you're interested in. The 6600 is the more reliable product. The A580 is also not really a standout at this price, offering similar cost per frame to the 6600. If you want to consider pricing trends when buying, here's a look at the overall market. NVIDIA's RTX 40 series has been relatively consistent over the last few months. The 4070 Ti hit a new low, the 4080 Super is back to MSRP, but the 4060 Ti series went up in price slightly. There's nothing here that's significantly different to what we've seen in previous months, and I wouldn't expect a ton of price movement, as most of the changes recently have been due to NVIDIA's introduction of the Super Series. The Radeon 7000 series has slowly dropped in price for most models, and many are sitting at historic lows, though only by a few dollars. The biggest movers have been the 7900 XTX, which is now $40 cheaper than a few months ago, the 7700 XT has also dropped to $410, and the 7900 XT is reliably a $700 GPU now. I wouldn't be expecting tons of changes in the next few months though. The RX 7600, for example, has been either $250 or $260 for most of the last six months. Intel's Arc series fluctuates a bit, but no new pricing this month, and only the A580 is at a historic low price right now. Supply for the GeForce 30 series is nearly exhausted, so I wouldn't bother considering most models outside the RTX 3060, and similar can be said for the Radeon 6000 series. The RX 6600 seems to be in the strongest supply with plenty of models available, but if you want cards like a 6800, 6750 XT, or 6650 XT, I would buy sooner rather than later as supply is finally drying up. So that's where the GPU market sits at the moment and the products that are the best buys. It's actually a pretty difficult discussion to have right now because there are 
few standout excellent buys, but also few absolute stinkers. Most GPUs are currently positioned in a way to offer value to certain subsets of buyers. Radeon is typically pretty competitive for rasterization performance, GeForce looking good for ray tracing and features. Both brands have adjusted pricing to ensure there are no crazy outliers for the most part. Of course, in general, the GPU market is not especially interesting right now, and despite there being some products that are better value than others, I don't think any of these GPUs would qualify as excellent deals or great value, something we looked at in a video last week to determine what would actually be a great value GPU. When talking about the best GPUs, we more mean for people that are set on buying something right now and want to know the best options. As we approach a new generation of GPUs that will probably start to launch around the end of the year or early next year, we're beginning to approach the time where you'll have to make the call to buy or wait. For high-end buyers, it will soon make more sense to wait for products like the RTX 5090 that will launch earlier, but if you're a mid-range shopper, especially if you want a next-gen GeForce GPU, we could be more than a year away from seeing what's in store. It's something to keep in mind for sure, and as always, it depends on how desperate you are for an upgrade, what you are currently using, and the games you want to play. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update, and I guess a bit of a look at the best GPUs on the market right now. If you appreciate this analysis and you want to keep us making these videos really, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and also consider supporting us via Patreon or Floatplane. Links to those are in the description below. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.